This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hi, I'm Mark, the Electronic Engineer, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share a project I just finished, and it's a, of course, Spectrum Analyzer, 10 channels, analog design. Which means the front end of the Spectrum Analyzer is completely done with analog electronics. What makes it special is that we're going to use 10 Nixie tubes, or I should say Nixie tube lookalikes because I'm going to show you how you can build your own. When it's finished, you will have a nice steampunk look 10 channel spectrum analyzer. Of course, if you don't like steampunk, you can always give it a different color or change anything in the design. It doesn't change the electronics we're using. So let's get started. So these are all the parts we need. You'll need a PCB and you'll need some pixelettes WS2812B or instead of using these two to make this PCB, this is the one assembled, instead of using this one you can also decide to use some standard LED strip. It's totally up to you. And then Assuming you're going with the PCB, you also need a connector. I use a 7-pin audio connector and we can discard this one. And we only need the connector itself. Then we need a little wire, strong wire or uh, like I did, connector that we can solder into there and of course onto the PCB. And then you get this one. Inside the electronic parts, you'll also need a diffuser that you can print yourself. You'll need some uh, mace. I use actually uh, an old piece of a, a fly door, a screen door. And you'll need a glass test tube, a laboratory test tube. So first thing we want to do is take this mace and we roll it on something around like a pencil. Could be anything that fits in the test tube and the reason for that is that we're carefully going to insert the mace all the way in now the tricky part is to make sure that it's aligned because if you put it in here it's kind of twisted and we need to straighten that out which is what I'm doing right now. Because what we don't want is the maze to look all twist it and turn, like so. Once that is done, we do the same thing with the diffuser. Of course, I cut it out and then gently roll it without making too much dents. And we carefully put it in here. And as you can see, I make sure that the groove in the paper lines up with the or lines up with the groove in the maze and then I'll just put it in there now and this is important on the front there's a white stripe as you can see it's a little, a little bit twisted and that's not what we want because this is even more important than the maze and we'll have to straighten that out It's even getting worse. Now 
Yeah, that's not good. This is better, okay? And then of course, the connector that we soldered onto the board has to go in here. Uh, we'll have to glue them up. So this is what we got. You can see if it touches the glass, and then you get this, that's why you have the diffuser. You want to make a cool looking project using some electronics, but they often end up looking like this. Or like this. Fortunately, there is a way to make them look very professionally and economically. You can do it with PCB Way, whether it's a school project or a professional grade project. PCB Way has all the services you need to create your project at the best price. Look at all the options they have. PCBs up to 14 layers with different base materials like aluminum and copper, flexible PCBs, SMD stencils, component assembly, and they even offer services like CNC machining and 3D printing, which is amazing. In PCB Way, you can share it with the community or you can also get some inspiration from the projects made by others. Quality and standardization is taken seriously in PCB Way. Designs are checked before and after production to make sure your circuit will work as intended, always using the most up to date technology. And the ordering process is very simple. Get the best quality and price in PCB Way. So you can buy the PCB already uh, partly pre assembled, which means all small components, the SMD components, are already. Uh, Assemble for you, so all you need to do is solder on a handful of uh, true hole components. And of course, we're going to use the ESP32. But before we add the components, make sure that you separate the PCB main part and the user interface. So you'll get two PCBs. Because once the components are on there, it's going to be a lot harder to separate the two. And later on, we will just connect those here one on one to get a connection so we can place this away from the main PCB. Make sure when you uh, place the variable resistors to uh, use the right values on each spot because they're not identical, they all have different values. And then, in regards to connectors, you only have to assemble what you're going to use. And for me, that's going to be the, the, the one for the power which is going to be placed there the one for the the led strips which is going to be placed there and of course uh, there's a connector for the audio on this side and the microphone and basically those are all those are all the connectors i'm going to need then i'm going to use some some headers i will shorten them to the right length and i will place them 
uh, on the PCB so I can just um, place the ESP the ESP32 um, on the PCB easily and I can remove it uh, without having to desolder it if ever I need to remove it. I highly recommend you do the same because if you solder it onto the board and you need to remove it for whatever reason it's going to be a hell of a job. We have the potentiometers they're going to be placed there and the switches and when it's all finished it will look like this. So this is what it looks like when it's all uh, soldiered up and one thing you should notice is the connector on the interface side I soldiered on the bottom because that way it's easier to fit in the panel later and it doesn't really matter for the wiring. But that's totally up to you. And of course now we have a socket to add our ESP. Like so. So let's take a look at the wiring of the uh, tube connections of the LED strips. And basically what you see here is a thin copper wire which is the data line goes from output to input, output to input, etc. This side is where we connect uh, the input coming from the microcontroller board. Uh, of course we have the 5 volts and the ground that will be connected directly to the PCB. As you can see, I hooked them all up with strong wire. Here you see the user control board mounted, like that. And of course we have the power switch, the power entry and the audio. And later on I might make a hole here for the microphone. And of course the main PCB that will be placed somewhere along here. So in the end I can just close it up with a nice lid. So this is it uh, assembled. Here we have the power switch, the power entry and the, and the line input. Of course you see the bus at the bottom. Let's just call it the bus. is actually used for the, the NeoPixel tubes. Of course the PCB and the cable to the user interface. We just mount it right there. And there you have it. It's ready for some tubes. You'll never be in my shoes, you'll never know my feet Can't be in my kitchen cause you'll never stay